Unit 2, Lesson 3, The Need for Addressing. At the conclusion of this lesson, students will be able to explain the need for open and shared protocols for communicating on the internet, describe the way the internet protocol helps uniquely identify one another on the internet. As a warm-up, imagine you were in a room with five other people all with the same name as you. What might happen when you start communicating? Pause and think about this. Jot down your, your answer to this prompt. Okay, you've got an answer? Fantastic. In class, I'll be asking people what their answers are. Here are some points that I would like to bring up. First off, there might be confusion about who the person is trying to talk to because everyone has the same name. Multiple people might be talking at once making it hard to tell what people are talking about. People may just stop communicating because of the confusion. So here we have a real problem. In the previous class or last lesson, you created a network that had strengths and weaknesses. Today in this lesson, we are going to use a tool where one of the strengths is that everyone is connected and can get communications quickly at the same time. From our discussion, you might be starting to understand some of the weaknesses of this type of network. Now, if you have not already done so, please access the Unit 2 Lesson 3 Activity Guide called The Need for Addressing. This can be found on code.org, Unit 2, Lesson 3, and it is the Level 2. You should be able to find the activity guide. You can download it so you can refer to it or print it, your choice. While you are doing that, if you haven't done it already, you can pause this video until you have it. All right, now with the need for addressing, you will need the activity guide, any pen or pencil. In groups of five or six, which means if you are watching this video by yourself, you can watch it for the information, but it's hard to reenact as an individual, okay? So really, it's hard to do this, almost impossible to do this particular activity as an individual. But what we did in class is with a group of five or six, you were going to send off to your break room. If you were in a group of five, everyone crossed out Sunday. If you were in a group of four, we were short on people, then everyone crossed out Sunday and Saturday. If you were in a group of six, then you simply left it as is. Before starting to schedule each week, choose a random day of that week when you're busy and cross it out. So everybody within the group would pick a day and cross it out. Then what happened I would, with your group, you would check that everyone's schedules match, then discuss what worked well and what made this tricky, if there's anything you want to try differently in week two. And again, this means that you are, oops, reading this, okay, so you crossed them out, you said that you were busy on a particular day, and then read the directions to do the planning, right? You're going to work with the group so that all the schedules match, and then discuss what worked well and what made it a tricky thing to do. If there's anything you want to try differently in week two. Once your group is ready, fill in your schedules and form a response to the prompt above. So look at it, see what everybody did, and I gave them about five minutes. So this wasn't a terribly long process, but the idea is to go through the exercise. Okay. When they came back, okay, with the same group, I had them follow the same directions to set up week two. If, you are, if they were a group of five, everyone crossed out Sunday, a group of four, they crossed out Saturday and Sunday, and then they crossed out a new random day. So again, it's not two random days, but you simply had something busy. If you were a group of six, the only thing you did was you crossed out which day you were busy. Right. Then you needed to complete week two. This was not a breakout room. This is one that you can kind of do yourself. No breakout room, just the simulator for now. So students went to lesson three. Notice. Okay. And boom. 
notice that we're at level two and this is going to be the simulator so if you're doing this by yourself you may see if you can get a couple of friends to do this with you you go to lesson three level two and join a room with your group with your group mates so decide who's going to be the top person and they ask everybody else to join once everyone is in the room complete week two on the simulator now the big thing is while you're in your breakout rooms there's no talking while you're doing the simulation okay when you're done doing the simulation i want you to fill out the top of the back side of your sheet what problems did you encounter and how do you want to fix them when you move forward to week three so after after the group finishes doing week two without talking figure out what you're going to do differently for week three to make it run more smoothly at this time take your five minutes and look at what you have to do how you have to schedule your week and start okay now that you've finished week two okay, we're going to go back to breakout rooms and we're going to agree on your rules all right so you're going to go to the breakout rooms agree on your rules and then once you agree on your rules stop talking so when i send you when i sent people to the breakout room or in class you went to your groups okay you had a set of rules you had to agree to agree on before you started once you had those rules stop talking and you set up your boards for week three again there's no talking once you start working okay. after completing week three based on your experience write down the rule in the rules section the collective rules you and your team would advise using going forward and at the end of this one person from each group will share so this takes a little bit longer because i want your rules i want the rules to be explained some sample um, messages that follow your rules okay so take a few minutes and again look it over if you have some friends that can do this with you on the simulator, that would be great. Go ahead, pause the video, and try this portion. All right, now, to share your rules. At this point, I would be having all the groups in the class either in class, in person, or virtually share the rules that they came up with. Here, the key points that I'd like to see brought up with it, all devices and computers on the internet or on your net use connect to the IP. Some key points, sorry, to make about networks in general is that all devices and computers on the internet or on your network use IP to connect and communicate with each other. IP is a protocol. All the devices, all your people need to use the same protocol. Devices are assigned unique numbers. People are assigned unique names. These are converted to binary sequences called IP addresses, but each person had to have a unique name or a unique number. All devices format the sender and receiver information the same way so that devices on different networks can still communicate. So when you all talked back and forth, you had to decide to say, Mrs. Whalen, Susan, and then there's a message. And that would mean Mrs. Whalen is sending Susan a message. If Susan wanted to send Mrs. Whalen a message back, she would say Susan, Mrs. Whalen, and the message. That would be one format. You could have other formats. You could have the message and then say it was who it was from and who it was to. But you need that information and you need to agree on the format. Now, in doing these activities, there were a lot of really important principles that are salient on the internet okay the first is that if we want to talk to each other we need to know who messages are going from and to you need both a sender and a receiver the other is that we are all going to need to be using the same set of rules if we want to communicate with one another remember that i can't speak english somebody else speaks chinese somebody else speaks russian and somebody else speaks spanish and none of us know how to speak the other language, we can't communicate, okay? There has to be a common way of communication, a common protocol. We're gonna watch a movie, short movie, short video, about these concepts. 
if you are watching this video on your own, in just a second, you will go to the Canvas page and click on it, or you can go to code.org and click on it, either one. It's called the Internet, IP Addresses, and DNS. This man right over here, this is Vint Cerf. He is considered to be the father of the Internet, or one of them. Now, before you head off to watch that video, please take down these three terms. These are terms that you need to know that go in with your vocabulary for lesson for unit two. Protocol, an agreed upon set of rules that specify the behavior of some system. We use protocols so that we can communicate with one another over the computer. IP address, the unique number assigned to each device on the internet. Internet protocol, IP, a protocol for sending data across the internet that assigns a un unique numbers, the IP addresses, to each connected device. Okay. The vocabulary. Pause the video so that you can write these down in your notebook. Okay. Our next lesson will focus on routers and redundancy.